I'm Kathy Neptune and welcome to my kitchen. I'm going to share tips, tools, and recipes to make your time in the kitchen fun, fast, and fabulous. And we're into spring and what's coming up in May is Cinco de Mayo. So I thought a great way to honor that tradition in May or any time of year, we're going to go Mexican. And these are very, very different, unique, and flavorful recipes. And I wanted to mix it up with different flavors. You don't want to set a menu uh, that has all the same tomatoey, uh, habanero pepper flavors. Uh, so we're going to try and mix it up a little bit. We're going to do a rice, a Mexican rice, a ton of flavors and textures. And then we're going to do baked chicken enchiladas. You're going to love those. And a little corn salsa to go on top of those enchiladas with some garnishes and a fabulous dessert that has cinnamon in it and chili. So stay tuned for that. And I'm going to take you over here to the stove where I've got some rice cooking. And I want to show you this. It's so important to put flavor into every little step that you do. And this is a cup and a half of rice. And before I added the rice to the pan, and it's just regular grain rice, not instant, I sauteed one, probably a half to a third cup of chopped onions, and also a clove of garlic. I sauteed that till it got translucent, probably takes about four to five minutes on low. And then I added the rice to this, and I actually toasted it. Did you know you could toast rice? And that adds such a depth of flavor to this. But I have to tell you, and I'll remind you three different times, watch the rice so that it doesn't burn. Because if you've ever toasted raw pasta, it can also burn. So you really, really have to watch this carefully. So it's toasting here, again, five minutes. And again, be sure that you watch it carefully so it doesn't burn and stir it constantly. And to this, we're going to add, for more flavor, about a tablespoon of tomato paste. And we're going to take that and we're going to toast that on the stove. So you want to be, again, careful that you don't scorch this. And the reason you do that is tomato, is, tomato paste is a very raw, almost bitter, acidic flavor. And if you don't cook it, for a little while, and I'm gonna do this for about two minutes. That takes all that bitterness and rawness out and it gives you a cooked flavor into your finished products uh, and your recipe. And that makes a huge, all these little steps make a huge difference in your finished product. It's gonna get nice and toasted and roasty and blend all the flavors with the rice that we have here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just stir this constantly for two minutes and when we come back i'm going to show you what it looks like hi welcome back oh this smells so fragrant i want you to look at this we haven't even put any liquid in here yet this is our caramelized onions almost caramelized certainly softened about a third to half of a cup in our toasted rice and i did add a little bit of uh, olive oil and butter because with rice you always want to add a little butter then I added a tablespoon of the tomato paste and cooked that in there. Now look, at you can just see the flavor that's going to be in that rice. That is all flavor. And then I have about a cup and a half of homemade chicken stock. And I made that. I bought a rotisserie chicken that we're using for our chicken enchiladas. And what do you do with the bones? You throw them in a crock pot and make chicken stock. So we put that in, and then let me pull my tray of ingredients over here. I have some wonderful fresh lime zest, just to give it a little freshness. A little bit, and this is a can of the pureed, you know, the eight ounce cans of tomato sauce, and I'm not gonna put it all in. I'm gonna do about half and see how that translates. If it gets a little drier, I can add some later. So I'm mixing that in. And then this is why I didn't put a whole eight ounce can of the tomato sauce in. I have some regular jarred salsa. Now I love the flavors in the salsa and that's about a half a cup. And again, I can add a little more if I need it. 
And look at, you can just see how the flavors are going to come together on this. And then for flavorings, some cumin and about a half a teaspoon. Because this is going to be, even though there's flavorings in our salsa. And then, you know, me in my pantry, I had fun. You could just use the cumin and chili powder if you want, a half a teaspoon of each. But I have smoked paprika, garlic, chili, and chives spice blend. So why not? We're going to put a little half a teaspoon of that. And remember, rice needs a lot of help for flavor. It really does. And how fun is this? It's chili and lime spice blend. So not too much of that because we already have the lime in there. But again, to enhance the chili flavor in there because it is Mexican. So another half teaspoon of that. And we're going to put that back covered on the stove. And that's going to cook for about, I'd say, 20, we'll check it at 20 to 25 minutes and see how it's done. You don't want to spill this. Turn up the heat, cover it, and bring it up to a simmer. And I'm going to check on that. You don't want to over stir it and bring out the starches in the rice, but you do want to monitor and make sure it isn't sticking to the bottom of the pot. And this is kind of a heavy, you want to use a heavier pot, not a light aluminum, because again, because you're not stirring it. You don't want anything to stick to the bottom of the pot. So we're going to let that cook. I'm going to gather all my ingredients for our chicken enchiladas. This is a great family meal. You're going to love it. So we'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. We're about to start on our chicken enchiladas. And this is a great kind of put everything in a bowl recipe. I'll give you varied measurements, um, but you can kind of eyeball it. So I'm going to start in this bowl by making the sauce that's going to keep everything together. And I have a whole can of very retro cream of chicken soup, which I think is terribly underrated, but it brings a nice flavorful creaminess to this recipe. And then I have in here... This is a 16 ounce container of sour cream. I'm going to add about eight ounces and you can measure this if you want or just do half a container is pretty good. A whole can of these green diced fire roasted chilies, juice and all goes in there. And these are good. They're not very spicy. So if you're concerned about having something spicy, don't worry about it. And we're going to save a little bit of this sauce. And you can do everything in one bowl. And before I add my rotisserie chicken here, I'm going to add some, just a little bit of cheese. <laughs> little bit being the key here. This is probably four cups of cheddar. This is a Monterey Jack blend. And I freshly grated. I usually don't buy the one that's already grated in a, in a bag because they put chemicals and stuff in there. They keep it from clumping and I think it gives it a kind of a flowery note to it and I'm not crazy about it. So this is just a block that I've shredded ahead of time. And if this is too thick, we can add a little bit to it to kind of thin it down. But right now I'm going to take and mix this. And I like wherever I can to add a little flavor. So this is just ground cumin. About a good teaspoon of that. And you can measure if you like. But we don't need any salt in this because the cream and chicken soup has a lot of flavor in it. Oh, this, this is going to be so good. This is a really good crowd pleaser if you're entertaining and you want to do a hearty no fuss dinner you can do all of this ahead of time so i'm putting a little bit about half of that in a bowl and save that for later and i'm going to add about let's see about two cups of chicken and we don't want to overload it we just want to blend it together actually i'm going to use this so that all of the cream filling, this is going to be the filling for our enchiladas. All of it is incorporated. And you can see it's not like soupy. It's a nice thick 
blend that's going to go perfectly in to fill our enchiladas that we're going to roll up and put into our casserole dish. So I'm going to put that there. I think that's a pretty good size, pretty good amount. You could add a little more because we have it. And like I said, I took the rotisserie chicken and I saved the bones and in my crock pot I just added onion, celery, garlic, and carrots and I made a beautiful stock overnight. Why throw all those wonderful bones away when you can use it? So I'm going over here and I'm going to add, this is our beautiful chicken stock that I made and I'm going to thin this sauce down just a little bit because I want it to be more spreadable. And that's probably just a scant quarter cup. So that's our other element. And I have a casserole dish here that I've sprayed with nonstick spray. And just so that it isn't too dry, I'm just going to spread a small amount on the bottom of the dish, like so, just to give a base for our enchiladas so they're not dry on setting on the bottom of the dish. And this is going to go later on the top. And I'll move this aside. Look at that beautiful chicken stock. That is like gold. So we're going to take our enchiladas and we're going to stuff them in. You know, there's several thoughts on the enchiladas. Look at how soft and pliable. Now these are flour tortillas that I have. And you can dip them in sauce if you want. You can brush them with butter. But I find if you just steam them, steam them in the microwave for about 30 seconds, they come out nice and soft like this. So we're going to take these and I want you to be able to see. It's easy. Get the children involved in doing this if you want. And I like to stuff them pretty, make them pretty meaty. And it, remember, it has the chili in it and the cheese and the beautiful chicken. Put them right inside the dish and it's just basically assembling. And now you can do this ahead of time if you'd like, the night before, because it isn't going to make them soggy. You want your tortillas, your flour tortillas, to be nice and soft. The biggest thing is making sure that you fill them pretty similarly so they all look the same. Although we're going to cover this with sauce and cheese anyway, but you get the idea. Now one time I didn't want to, I felt like I didn't want to be rolling all these enchiladas. So what I did is I had a, a larger dish and I made like a like a lasagna pan and instead of rolling these individually what I did is made sheets like you would lasagna and I used the tor flour tortillas like lasagna noodles laid them all out put layers in there and topped them with cheese and it was just like a chicken tortilla lasagna you can kind of squeeze as many of those as you can because look at all the filling we have in here. Not a bad thing. Now so far this isn't difficult to do at all. It's making use of some good pantry items that you can stock up in your refrigerator and or on your pantry shelf. And anytime you have leftovers with chicken, what a great go-to meal this would be. And for entertaining, wait until you see how we serve this up. It's just so bountiful and f so much flavor. Now, do you think, can you see what we're doing here? I think we can fit one more. And we're still going to have a lot left over. Roll that in there. One more. Oh, I think that's... Perfect. Kind of tuck the ends in like so. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a pretty good amount. And this, I love this recipe because it's flexible. You can do as many or as few as you want. These freeze beautifully if you wanted to do it to this level without baking them. It's a great recipe to put in your freezer. Make sure that you seal it and wrap it very well but we're taking the rest of this filling and remember we don't have any chicken in this filling and that was about half of the sauce 
that we saved. It has the cheese, the chili, the ch uh, cream of chicken soup, a little bit of cumin, and that cheese is going to melt and make the most wonderful sauce. It's almost retro, bringing back the cream of chicken soup that we had. Remember the cream of chicken and cream of mushroom? Every casserole had it. And it is a time saver. And then what we're going to do is take a little more of this beautiful cheese because it's not ever enough cheese and sprinkle that over the top. And I have my oven set at 350. And what's nice about this is you don't have to cover it because you want the cheese to bubble up. And everything in here is cooked, so all you're really doing is warming up all your ingredients inside so the cheese is going to melt all the way through. And that's our, how easy is that, our chicken enchilada casserole. And this is going in the oven for about 30 minutes. I'm going to check on our rice, and when we come back, I'm going to show you something special for a salsa that we're going to put on top of this. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. I just, we have our chicken enchilada casserole in the oven. It's cooking away. That's going to be yummy. And on the stove, we still have a few minutes left to our Mexican rice. And I did check it and it looked a little dry. So I added about another third cup of the chicken stock, which is, a, like I said, a good thing to have on hand just to check and make sure you don't want dry, chewy rice. And sometimes I serve if it's not, um, it shouldn't be a light and fluffy rice. That's not what it's about. It's a little heavier, of course, with the tomatoes and the chilies and everything. But um, you don't want it to be dry at all. But it's okay if it's a little more saucy than you would normally have a rice. So that's got a few more minutes left and it's smelling really good in here. And we're going to to go over our chicken enchiladas because you notice they're a little pale. Okay, they're, they're very pale. And I just wanted to bump it up and I want to show you, look at the colors of these ingredients. We're going to make a corn salsa. Very easy, very fresh, very simple to do. And I took some Roma tomatoes and I, I love Roma tomatoes. I think they're very consistent in the market um, and I chop them up and you don't have to seed them look at how very little seeds are in there if you're using any other type of tomato you would probably want to seed it because they get very watery and you don't want that in your salsa nothing too watery and with all that I used uh, two good sized romas that's all the juice that was in there so I'd say that's a good choice then we have some chopped red onions. And these, I did my favorite technique. And I put a little bit of sugar and water in them because as I was dicing this onion, it was very strong. My eyes were tearing up and I said, oh, that's going to be really strong. So about a half a cup of water with a tablespoon of sugar kind of mellows out the onion. And that is just such a good technique to have. So we're going to put all of that and that's you'll notice these are all about the same quantities that's about the same amount of tomatoes so i use the same size bowls and it's my way of kind of measuring because they're all filled equally and look at the color of that already then this is one of my favorites this is a corn that i buy at a special shop it's a fire roasted corn and i just do because i love the flavors in and it reminds me of the mexican street corn where they sprinkle with a little cheese cojita cheese and some chili and lime and it just looks so colorful or you can add regular corn if you'd like and this you can do well ahead of time as well then for our little enhanced items i don't have you could certainly put in jalapeno peppers I'm not a big fan of just heat only. So I think I mentioned before, I love pepperoncini peppers that come in a jar. And they do have a little kick to them, but they're not overly hot and they add a ton of flavor. So I added about a tablespoon of pepperoncini and you drain them and just chop them. And then another pepper that I love, these are called pepperdew. And they come in a jar, and they have a little kick to them. Now, they come with mild and hot. 
and even the mild ones have some heat to them. So I caution you, if you're going to do a hot pepperoncini, you might as well go for the jalapenos because they are hot. So that adds a lot of flavor. Now look at the color here. We're missing some green. So I'm going to add a little bit of lime zest in there and some avocados and last a little bit of lime juice. So I'm going to cut open. This one seems a little soft. So I hope this avocado is not gone past its prime. Oh no, that looks perfect. And you want to cut away. And I slice these right inside the avocado. I'm going to cut little chunks. And I think I mentioned before, if you have an avocado that isn't ripe, throw it in the microwave for about 30 seconds and check to see if it's softened. And it'll get you to ripen the avocado. You know, if you need it right away and you don't want to wait a couple of days, this is the way to go. So we're just going to slice it up in nice chunks. And we're going to add lime juice to this too so that it's going to keep it from turning brown. If you were going to do this whole salsa ahead of time, I would suggest that you put the avocado in last because it will turn brown. But I love these smaller ones because they're ripen a little quicker and they're a little more manageable for the amount that you're putting in. And right on top of that, I'm going to add some fresh lime juice right directly on top of the avocado. And you put the juicer in, cut side down like that, so you don't get any in your eyes. And we're going to put quite a bit, because this is going to kind of make a dressing in there. And I think I'm going to add the whole thing because it's going to brighten the whole salad. You want a little liquid in there to dress it. Oh, this is going to be good. And then for a little more flavor, remember we have tomatoes that need salt, or the avocado, the corn. So just a little bit along the top. I just do half a teaspoon. You can always add more later. And we're going to toss that. This is, this would just make a salad. You know what this would be good with? Some beautifully grilled shrimp or Mexican chicken. Put it on top of tacos. Look at that. That says spring to me. And then, I think that's all incorporated in there. We're going to put a little bit of chives just because we have them and they look so pretty and festive. And that's our Mexican so corn salsa that we're going to put in a pretty bowl and serve for the topping on our chicken enchiladas. I'm going to check on everything on the stove. We're going to do a dessert. You're not going to want to miss this. This is a good one. It's so fun. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. We're going to do our dessert. And have you ever had deep fried ice cream? It's very popular in the Mexican menu. And uh, it's usually ice cream, balls of vanilla ice cream that they coat in cornflakes. And somehow they manage to deep fry it. Really, they deep fry it. And it has a little cinnamon flavor. Well, we're going to replicate that in kind of a different way. I think you're going to enjoy this. And get the kids involved with this because it's really fun. I have a mini muffin pan that I've sprayed with nonstick spray. And we're going to do, again, the flour tortillas. And to make these pliable like we did with the enchiladas is I put them in the microwave to soften them. And we're going to do... You can do as many of these as you want. You can do them ahead of time. And if I was doing this for a crowd, I'd have a, my larger one going. But what we're going to do here is these are nice and warm, and you can see how pliable they are. We're going to separate them, and I have some melted butter here. And we're just going to spread that over. Kids love doing this. And I have cinnamon and sugar in a little sugar shaker. And don't forget to email me for these tools, and they really make life easier. And I do about half a cup of regular white sugar with a teaspoon of cinnamon. And get a really good flavored cinnamon. 
um, it, it just makes a huge difference. So I'm going to do that and flip this over and do the other side. Just because you can never have enough cinnamon and sugar in a little bit. And I'm just stacking these so they're easier to do. And then you can do all of them, butter them all together, and then do all the cinnamon and sugar. But if you have help in the kitchen, this is a good job to pass along. Nothing much to it. And I don't know how many granules of cinnamon and sugar I'm putting on here, but it's a coating, so that's a good thing. Make sure you get a lot. And then we're just going to take a knife. Let me see where my knife is. I'll just grab one here. You could use a pizza cutter. Why don't we just make it easy and do a pizza cutter. I'm going to cut these into four pieces. And we're going to fit them into this muffin pan. And the thing that makes this so much fun is I have a tart shaper. And I'm going to show you how easy this is. I just take the larger end and press it down. It doesn't have to be fussy, but because we heated these up, they're very flexible and pliable. And I do every other one so that they don't stick together. And you can see they form little cups. And if you didn't have one of these, you can use get a small... Uh, even a little cup like this, and you can press it in like that, or just use your fingers and do it. It's not hard to do. So I'm alternating every other one, getting it right in there. And these only bake for about five minutes. Um, I have to tell you, be very careful to watch them, because all the sugar on here, they would burn easily. So I always buy or make extras, just in case I get distracted. Or if somebody calls me with questions that aren't food related, that happens. I wonder if I can put one in here. We'll give it a try. I'm gonna try and sneak a few more in here. And you can certainly do this ahead of time as well. But you can see they're forming little cups that we're gonna fill with little scoops of ice cream. And I like the vanilla ice cream because we're gonna do other things with these, of course. And I'll pop these in the oven because our oven is already on, and look at our timer. We have five minutes left, and you know how long these cook? Five minutes. So we did pretty good on that timing. And our enchiladas, excuse my back, are bubbling away. And what we're going to do for the top of that, look what I have here. This is just a regular store squeeze bottle chocolate sauce. You know the kind that you put in hot cocoa or something? And I just warmed it up a little bit because we're going to use, remember these, our little pipettes? So we're going to add a little bit of chili powder because this is a Mexican dessert. And a little bit of cinnamon. And I would say just a few shakes of each. And we're going to mix that up. And that's going to go into our little pipettes. And over here... This is such a Mexican blend. Cinnamon and chili together, it's killer. And look, do you know what this is? Cornflake, just regular cornflake cereal that we're going to sprinkle on the top. And when we come back, we're going to put all of this together with our chicken enchiladas, our corn salsa, which is amazing, our wonderful Spanish rice. By the way, I wanted to mention when I checked the rice during the break, it was a little dry, so I added... Uh, another little quarter cup of chicken stock to that and it's perfect and then after the 20 25 minutes are up with the cover on you remove the cover and let it kind of turn the heat off and let it kind of set for 10 minutes so all the steam it helps separate the grains and evaporate the rest of the residual moisture that might be in there. So a few steps, but certainly nothing you can't manage. Look at all the different recipes we've done tonight. So when we come back, we're going to have everything together for you. Hi, welcome back to our Mexican in May feast. I want you to check out our beautiful Spanish rice that we just are serving in a wonderful dish. Look at how light and that's going to have so much flavor. It's nice and fluffy and 
full of flavor. Don't forget to toast your rice and watch it carefully. These are our beautiful chicken enchiladas, and I'm going to serve that up for you. So you can see, I'm going to try and get maybe two per serving. It's kind of tricky to do, but you can get in there and figure it out. Or maybe we'll just start with one. Get yourself a good size spatula. And you can even cut these in half to serve them. But there we go. And I'm going to, ooh, a lot of cheese. Lots of cheese. And we're going to put a little bit of, let's do our sour cream. Okay, over the top. And everybody can just help themselves. And our beautiful corn salsa. Look at how colorful the lime and the veggies and the avocado. And let's put some beautiful rice on the side. This is a feast. What a great mealtime or company dish. I'm going to put that right there. And now, just like I promised, I'm going to get something out of the freezer for our dessert. And I did this ahead. You know me, whenever you can do something ahead of time. These are our beautiful little flour tortillas. Remember, we brushed them with butter, sprinkled them with cinnamon sugar, and baked them for five minutes in the oven in a little mini muffin pan. And these are just plain old vanilla ice cream. And I used a little cookie scoop and made these little ice cream balls to keep them cold. And we're just going to put them right inside. Or you could do these right at the table if you'd like, but I like putting everything at the last minute. And they won't stand up. They're not perfect. But you can tell they're homemade. Oh, they all kind of stuck together, but that's okay. Let's just ice cream. Let's stick that in. And you can smell the cinnamon and the flavor in here. Great use of some flour tortillas. I wouldn't do this too far ahead of time for obvious reasons. So we'll put that in there set that aside and then we have our little cornflake crumbs and these are not going to stick you can sprinkle them a little bit all over but people my kids will take and dip them like this inside or you can do little smaller crunches as you put them over the top it's just to add a little bit of texture and they sprinkle them all over the dish and it adds a nice nice little homemade look to it Certainly not meant to be a fancy dessert, but truly homemade, which is what it's all about. And then I put some all over the plate. You can use other cereals, but this is traditional. And then remember our little pipettes that we did? I have in here our chocolate, just regular store-bought plastic bottle chocolate sauce, and we added the cinnamon and chili and we're just filling up our little pipettes and what I do is I stick them in the side like that and when you want to serve these you put them in the in a bowl with your little pipette on the side and people will take the sauce and just drizzle it you can do one as an example drizzle it all over the top and these are beautiful little Mexican. They taste like chorizos. Oops. Put that up. They're very wobbly. You could do a smaller dish if you want. Or just line them all up on here and do that for everybody. So they each have their own little pipette and their little dessert. So there we have it. What a festive, different, refreshing, delicious, and easy dinner to do. I hope you try that. It's colorful. You're going to love it. And thank you to everybody who writes in for the recipes and the tools and the tips. I love your emails. So thank you again for watching. Happy Cinco de Mayo. And may the fork be with you.